Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it is the revisit of the DAB digital radio job lot that I got. The parts have finally come through from China so I've got the audio chips in. I'm going to add heat sinks to these audio chips because I believe that it's a weak spot off the system. And then to put the heat sink on I've got some thermal glue but I might just use these little thermal sticky tape instead because I think it's going to be easier. So I'm hoping I've got a sort of job lot of a mixture of heat sinks. I think there's two different sizes. I think I'm going to put a small one on the chips in here and uh, yeah hopefully it'll make them last longer. I'm actually going to do them on all of them just to uh, you know improve uh, Hopefully they'll last long and they won't burn out so easy. So these two here are working fine now. This one just had a problem with a trapped ribbon cable. This one had a faulty audio chip. Now I took the audio chip from this little one here because this little one is missing its back, but it still works fine, hence the reason I bought more audio chips. I need to replace the audio chip in that one. So in this video, you're gonna see me replace it in this one and this one and add the heat sinks and stuff. On this one here, I just need to replace the aerial because it's missing its top. And also, although it's missing the top, it's, uh, it's very bent up as well. There's another one of these which is missing the top, this one here, but I didn't buy an aerial for this. I'm just gonna put a screw in that one to allow me to pull it out. Out because apart from the top being missing the actual aerial itself is okay and uh, yeah it's just a case of kind of cleaning them up and stuff and also adding the heat sinks to these two over here so most of the video will be just being fast forwarded because once you see me add one heat sink there's no point in watching me add them to all five of them so let's get started Okay, so I'm going to start with this aerial here. Now, I bought this off eBay and you've only got kind of limited measurements to go on, basically the diameter of it and how long it goes out and how many parts it extends by. When it came through, I've now realised that although the diameter looks spot on, if you look at the diameters there, they look to be exactly the same. If you look at the base bit here, for some reason it goes from a thick one to a thinner one and this is thick all the way down which is what you would expect so normally this has to go right the way in here and then this bit here would bend out like that and then you can swivel it around so uh, that's not an option because it would mean I'd have to make this hole bigger in the plastic which I don't really want to do so I'm going to see if I can just undo the screw here undo the screw here and then reuse this bit in here and just use this extendable bit and then uh, hopefully that will be an easy way out of it Right, so this screw's definitely coming undone. There we go. That comes out now. Right, well there was a washer there that just popped out. I think, I'm not sure where that's going to go, so let's pay more attention on this one here. There we go, it's coming. Right, let's see if this one has a washer. No, this one doesn't have a washer. So, oh, I can see. Okay, it's got a washer that side and that side, so it's kind of just sandwiched, uh, sandwiched in between. There's only one washer that's out at the moment, but the other one's still in there. You can just see where the nail of my thumb is. It's just there. Yep. So let's see if we can force this in with the washers. If not, I'll do it without the washers. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna go in, I think. Right. There we go, nice and tight. Yeah, that works. Excellent. Okay, well that was easier than there. Uh, having to take it all apart. But with this one now, I am still gonna take it apart anyway, just to see what the audio chip is in here. Well, I'm just gonna have a very close look at this chip here because it looks similar. I just wanna see if the markings are the same or not. Right, okay, that is definitely not the same chip and I think it's on the different board anyway. The one I'm looking at is an 8002B and if I go across the other chips on here, I can't see anything that resembles the 8 to zero, uh, the 8002B. So although this will have an audio chip on it somewhere, remember this one and the other one's working fine. So contracted mileage, you want to own the car. Yeah, there you go. Working fine. And let's go over to FM just to hear the 
the fuzz. I do know. I well, there you go. From... Right, okay, so this just needs to be cleaned and we'll clean them up at the very, very end. Let's move on to the next one. The one here that I need to replace, so let's zoom right in. This is where I removed it. You can see four pins up the top, four pins down the bottom. I see three. So, solder that looks a little bit dodgy here. I'm just going to see what's going on with this one. Okay, I think that is for, yeah, that's just for the jumper on the other side. Okay, so that's free from there now. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother changing all the solder on that. I am just gonna basically put a little bit of flux down and I'm just gonna use the hot air and uh, yeah, heat the new chip onto it. All right, just a bit of flux, I can clean it up afterwards. And here there should be 10 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, these came from China and they were they were so cheap, I can't even remember how much they were. I think they were like a under two pounds or something like that. I'll put it up on screen now. Let's just make sure they are the same as the old one. Right, so it says 8002B and the old ones, the faulty ones, which are here are also 8002B. Yep. I think these were working out to be... Or maybe it was under £3. I'm not, I'm not sure. But it, whatever it was, it was very cheap. I think it was working out to be something like 30p per chip or something like that. Right, OK. So I'm going to put them that way round. If I'm honest with you, I can't fully remember which way they go. But if you have a look, can you see we've got a little dot here and if you look at the diagram underneath, can you see we've got an indentation here? So I'm pretty sure they're gonna go this way round. If I'm wrong, I could just watch back the video, but remember I've got 10 of these. I'm almost certain it is that way, but if I'm wrong, I will then uh, take it off and just put on another one. Right, that's roughly in the right place. It's gonna be hard, because remember they're sitting on mounds of solder. So uh, to do it properly, I suppose really I should take off the old solder then put them down, and then I could just use the soldering iron to, to do that. I could wick off the old solder, but I think this is what's going to work just fine. It's not a hard board to heat up. So I'm using the hot air. I'm only going to go to, let's have a look, what should I do with that? I think because the board's so thin, I'm just going to go to 350 degrees Celsius, and I'm just going to do three out of eight airflow. Let's see how we got on with that. Right, looks like it's gone shiny, so I'm just going to give it a little knock. Oh, no. Now it's gone shiny, isn't it? Right, okay, surface tension didn't really sort of pull it in, but I can see they've all gone shiny. So uh, maybe there's not quite enough. There you go, that did it there. Right, I'm going to leave it at that. I can always add a bit of solder to it anyway if I'm not happy. I think they've all taken. Let's give it a bit of clean with IPA. You can see it's all in its place now. So let's. Uh, Let's quickly put it back together just to make sure it's still working. And then, all I want to do is just hear a little bit of sound. Now that wasn't my idea about the heatsink. That was given to me by you guys. I had a few comments on it, so uh, it was uh, really helpful. And it was probably being caused by having the volume up too high. So, well not too high, it just hasn't been designed particularly well. So if the, if the volume was kept kind of halfway, three quarters of the way, then that audio chip would probably be fine. But when you have it up on full, you're gonna be putting it under more, more strain. Right, I just wanna hear, see if I've got any sound at all. I haven't got the aerial connected. Let me just hold it with my fingers. 
There we go. I mean, if your name wasn't Harun Ahmed, it Perfect. could I'm sure someone's called you India Jones. There you go. Right, so uh, yeah, that's that. I'm gonna now pop the heat sink on it. I think to mix it up a bit, I'm just gonna uh, try different things on different ones. So obviously the tape is gonna be the easiest, but I also just wanna see how this thermal glue works, you know, the thermal compound. So it's not like thermal paste, because thermal paste kind of remains, you'd be able to slide it. This is supposed to kind of set it. Now with my heat sinks, it looks like I've got, I think it is just two different sizes. Yeah, so that is gonna be, it's a bit on the large size, isn't it? It's a bit, uh, it's a little bit big. Saying that, I suppose as big is good, as long as it's not gonna short against any of the other components. Because obviously if that fell down there, it's gonna short against the, uh, the what's it called? The, the capacitors and the resistors. I'm just gonna make sure, just to make sure that this definitely is conductive, I'm pretty sure that it's aluminium. But let me just double check this. Yeah, it's conductive. Okay, well look, let's just go for it. So I'm just gonna pierce this. I wonder now, once I pierce this, whether it's gonna have any shelf life at all. Oh, it just comes oozing out. Oh wow, it really is coming oozing out. Okay, let's just put a little bit more on there. There you go, that's plenty. Uh, let me clean that. Yeah, I hope it doesn't just go, go off and go rock hard straight away next time I go to use it. I hope it does allow a bit of use, otherwise it would work out quite expensive. It's not, it's not expensive, but if you only got one use out of it, it would be expensive. I think I'm going to put it in a sealable bag as well. Now I don't know how long they take to, how long it takes to dry, but what we'll do is let's just leave that there. You can see now that that's not touching any of the other components. Yep. So uh, put a nice bit of pressure down. Let, let, let's uh, leave that to dry while I do the next while I do the next one. Now ready to do this one, and this one has exactly the same chip. I removed it in the last video because it was faulty. So I'm just going to do exactly the same process as you just seen. Now with uh, with this one here, I just need to pop a screw in the end. It works absolutely fine, but the problem is there's nothing to grab onto. So when you push it back in, if you push it in too far, it's then a nightmare to take out again. Because normally with on aerials you have a little uh, bit at the end to grab onto. Yeah. So. Rather than replace the whole aerial because it is actually perfect, I'm just going to find a screw that's suitable to pop into the end. Now I don't know if I've got one, but basically throughout the years, every time I get like leftover screws and stuff, I just throw them into this big tub here. I know it's a complete rusty mess, but in here I've got all sorts of different screws and this, that and the other. So I'm hoping out of this whole box there will be something that will be suitable. Even, that's probably gonna to be too big, but even something like that, that I can just grab. Obviously this is rusty and dirty, but if I can just grab the top of it, then it's gonna make it a lot easier. So I'm gonna empty this out on the kitchen floor and find a suitable screw. When I do, I'll bring it back in and we'll pop it in. Now, that wasn't quite as easy as I thought because all of them are just a tiny bit too big. So now this one looks like, and sorry, and the others are too small that they just fall in, but this one looks like it just kind of fits perfectly. So I'm just going to screw it in and see how it feels, but I think it's going to be too, right, so that's too loose. But as you can see, it does kind of grip on the way out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crush this ever so slightly and, uh, oh, do you know what I could do? I could, I could just add a bit of glue to it, couldn't I? and then that's going to fill up the gaps. Maybe that would be a... Well, let me give it a little crush, and let's see what happens, just like that. And a little bit lower as well. There you go. Hopefully now that will sort of allow it to screw in. Hmm. I mean, yes, but it's going to come out, isn't it? After repeated use, that's going to come out, I think. Let's try to actually crush it while the screw's in there. Or hold on a minute. Would I be able to add? Would I be able to add solder in there? I wonder. I wonder would that work? I wonder could I pop, drip some solder in there, and then put this in and try to fill up the grooves here with solder so it all sticks together. Do you know what I mean? So it becomes more like a pin. Well, I'll give it a go. I'm going to put the solder up really high. I'm going to go to 480, which is the highest it will go. 
I don't even know if solder can stick in here, but if it can fill it up a little bit, it might work. If not, then maybe I'll use epoxy. It does look like it's, uh, look, <laughs> I wonder could I just fill up the, fill up the hole with solder? Imagine just putting a kind of solder bobble on the end of it. I presume it would just break straight off, but look, it's definitely filling up the hole. So now, let me melt this, pop this in. Actually, I'm going to keep putting more solder because I can just put the solder line on the edge and then it will heat it up, uh, it will melt the inside of it. So I'm just going to keep filling up that hole. So hopefully now it might be down like, you know, about half a centimetre or something. Or maybe more. Right. Now let's heat up that bit there. And let's start to screw it in. See if that's going to work or not. I've got the worst shakes today. Do you know what? I'm going to have to use hot air on this, aren't I? Let me use hot air now. I wonder is it going to melt the outside of the... I wonder is it going to melt the outside of the tube. Right, I'm up to 480 degrees Celsius now and I'm going to go 5 out of 8, try to get some heat down inside that. Come on, in you go. Yes, there we go. Right, excellent. Let that cool. Let's see if that's going to work or not. I'm actually quite hopeful. That might be an alright job, you know. Right, okay, let's see. Yeah, it's cooled down now. Well, well, that is going to work, look. I mean, I don't want to force it excessively, but look at that. <laughs> I am well happy with that. That's much better than just screwing it into it, because it doesn't deform it either. And if you have a look, I know it looks rubbish from the top. I wonder could I fill up the top with solder to then so it doesn't look like a screw? Now, that's an idea, isn't it? Fill up the top with solder. Let's zoom right in. Right, let's see if this is going to work. You never know. One second, let me just sort out my uh, the tip of my solder line. I'm going to pop it in this little cleaner here. Apparently you've got to put it right away in before I was just putting the very tip of it in, but you need to go I think you need to go like deep down into it. Oh look at that, that's nice isn't it? There you go, so that's the original part of it completely tin now. Right, let's get back onto this. Try to smooth that off. I mean, it might fall straight out again. Now, quite a few of you have told me that if I leave solder on the end of my tip, and then next time I come to use it, I can just wipe it off before using it, and then it doesn't oxidize. So I'm going to give that a go. The only downside of that is that I see it will be sort of giving off fumes when, uh, do you know when I'm heating it up next time? But maybe if it's, 
I don't know, if it's kind of already burnt the flux out of it, will it be giving off so many fumes? Maybe not. Now I know some of you were just gonna say I should have bought a new aerial, but this aerial was actually in good condition. And also, I couldn't find one to this exact spec. Remember, I'm only looking on eBay, and a lot of the eBay descriptions can be a little bit on the vague side. So, uh, I know this has taken a bit of time, but it's just useful to know different ways of trying to, trying to do things. Now, of course, you don't need to fill that top up at all. It's just that, you've got to admit, that that looks nicer now than it did when it looked like it just had a screw in it. I mean, look at that. If somebody didn't point it out to you, would you really think that that was a fake one? I'm not so sure you would. I'm well happy with that. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could sand it down and then uh, get it all sort of polished the same, but I don't think there's any need. Look at that. I'm well happy with that. Fantastic. Right, okay, let's uh, now take the chip out of this one and actually get it working. Sorry, the chip's already out of this one. I just need to put the chip into this one. Okay, exactly the same as last time. Bit of flux, use some heat and then pop it on. We're putting it on the dot where uh, the indentation is. Do you know what, just to be a bit different, should we, uh, I'm wondering if I should put this on with the solder iron instead. Have I got any wick here? Yeah, okay, just, just purely, if I was doing this myself, I would just use hot air, but just because it's the video, let's use some wick and let's take off this solder, and let's try to just solder the next one by hand. Right, so you can see now the pads are nice and clean. The reason I'm doing that is because it will then allow me to put this on completely flat. Right, so that's there, so let's just put a tiny bit of solder on one of the pins. We'll do each corner and then we'll just try to fill them in. Let's just do this one to begin with. I've got re I'm really shaking today. Okay, that's that one done. Let's do the opposite corner. Ideally, I'd like to be using my other tip, but with the soldering iron, I have to let it cool down before I can change the tips. It's not one of those quick change ones. But I think because the legs are quite far apart, I think I'll be okay. So you can see I've tagged it there and there, uh, just at each corner, so now I can fill up the other pins. Whoa. I think that's okay, I don't think I've got any, uh, I don't think I've got any bridges on that. Let's give it a good clean. Close look now. Yeah, so that is okay there. I'll put a bit of solder on the end of the capacitor, but that's, well, I say that's fine. I just want to double check through the eye loop where that capacitor's joined to. I don't want to kind of put a short across that bit on the wrong pin. Well, if I'm not mistaken, both pins are going to that capacitor. So that's fine. And uh, all those ones are separate up the top as well. And there's plenty of solder on it. So that is all going to be all right, I'm pretty sure. This one, let's have a quick look at this other one, see how it's drying. Right, so that's not drying. Surely it must, surely it must dry. Does it say anything on the actual, let me see if it says anything on the, the glue itself. Annoyingly it doesn't say anything on the, uh, on the packaging. 
Uh, surely it has to dry, otherwise it wouldn't be called a glue, would it? I'm just going to have a quick look online just to see what the drying time is for that. Right, I googled it, there isn't a huge amount of information there, but on one thing it did say about the Arctic stuff. I know this isn't the same brand, but that takes five hours. So if that takes five hours, then this has only been about 20 or 30 minutes or something, so it's quite believable that that's why it hasn't stuck. So I am actually just going to leave that be and uh, not touch it. So now, let's on this one, let's try to use the tape instead and see if the tape works. came on a big reel here, it's very thin stuff. The idea of it is, because I can't just glue it, it needs to transfer the heat onto the heat sink. Right, let's see. I mean, if this works, it will certainly be easier. Right, so let's stick that on here. I know it's massive, but when I actually put the heat sink on, it's going to be mostly taken up. And here it comes. I suppose I should have stuck it on the heat sink first and get another little small heat sink. Ah, there we go. Instant. Whee! There we are. Well, look, it's going to help a little bit, isn't it? Let's just put the pad up that side there. And I suppose by me covering the hole off the bottom, even if it was to tip ever so slightly, the uh, the thermal pad wouldn't be conductive, wouldn't it? Would it? Let me just double check that. Right. So the uh, heat sink is obviously conductive, but let's just do the thermal pad. No, no, of course it's not. Yeah. So the good thing about the thermal pad is you can put a big lump of it on. So then let's say now later on if this was to be dropped and it was to sort of tip over, as long as it didn't go fully on its side, if the thermal pad just hit the capacitors and the resistors, it's not going to cause a problem. Yeah, I quite like that. I suppose maybe a longer lasting fix might be the glue, but certainly for ease, that is definitely easier. Well look, it's on. Hopefully, hopefully it will do something to help it. Right, let's pop this one back together. Yeah, Such a perfect. Such old step as forming a European Union with a single currency and free movement of persons and goods. Yeah, and that's just the static on the FN. Was interviewed. Brilliant. This still has this little protective film on the uh, cover here. Well, one thing this is missing, which is quite annoying, is one of these rubber feet. So I may look on eBay for them just to see if you can get them. What I'd quite like is if you could get a sheet of different sizes, because I know on my Xbox One X as well, the tiny little black, tiny little ones, they're falling out all the time. Every time I move the thing, they fall out the bottom of it. So if I could just get a massive sheet with all different sizes on it and different shapes and colors, I mean, that would be ideal. Probably asking too much, but uh, that would be handy for other projects in the future. So I might look to see if I can get them. So uh, yeah, that's that one done. And you can see now that the aerial's looking good. Really happy with that. In fact, out of everything, although it was the audio chip that got it working, it's the aerial here that I'm most, uh, that I'm most happy with. Yeah. Right, so I just need to put together the other one and then uh, put it in a position to let it dry. So that's it there, and I want to rest it this way to keep the weight down on that. So I'm going to be resting it on that side there. Right, there we go. That's working. So now all I have to do is give them all a clean up. So I'll just quickly do that now. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one off here and put it onto here because this is a ma missing battery compartment anyway. So let me take one of these off. and stick it onto here. There we go. And now the bad one's even worse, but at least this one now, once I clean it, will be nearly perfect. There we go.
So here we have them all finished, all working, and more importantly, all nice and clean. So they did scrub up very well indeed. So I'm very happy with how they've come out. I would describe them all as, well not this one, I would describe these two here as near enough perfect. And these two I would say that they are in good to very good condition. This one here is actually in very good condition, but it is missing the battery pack cover thing here. And uh, I have obviously taken the feet off the bottom, but that's not a problem because I could just buy a pack of eBay and then take this one off and then I would have four matching ones again because nobody's going to know what they were like originally anyway. As long as they don't slide when they're on a worktop, that's the main thing. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how they've all come out. Cheers for all the advice about using heat sinks and stuff like that. I think it's a really good idea. Hopefully now they will last longer. I still need to do, I think it's this one here. I left out one of them. But uh, I can just do that off camera because it's just a case of opening it up. I can just probably just reach in maybe and put the thermal tape and then just put the heat sink on top of that. So I think that's quite a clever idea. And I think out of everything, the thing I'm most pleased with is how that aerial's come out there. Really happy with that little fix there. Hopefully it will last. That is it for this video. So uh, yeah, this job lot for me has been quite entertaining, especially when you find something like a faulty audio chip. It's really nice to get something working again and spending a small amount of money and having something that is completely useless to fully working again and spending less than 50p and just a little bit of time. So well, okay, well I suppose with the heat sinks and stuff, spending less than one pound and just your time. So hopefully you got as much enjoyment from these videos as I did from fixing them. And uh, if you did, please give them a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.